nobody fails to respond to the sound of the guitar.
I don't think anybody knows what the real history of the guitar is. There have been guitar-like instruments since uh, well before the time of Christ. Uh, it's not possible, though, to trace a direct lineage and say, here is uh, the first real guitar, and here is the instrument that led to that, and so forth. Um, I think as long as there have been people interested in making any form of music, there have been plucked strings. Certainly the most uh, sensual human form of music making, except for the voice, is to pluck a string. Probably the first thing was just a string stretched over a, a drum, perhaps, just a big plunk. And then somebody found that they could put their finger on that string and change the pitch, but it, the notes weren't very clear when their finger was down. And sometime they probably discovered that if they put a, a little piece of wood or something on the instrument and then pushed their finger down, then the note was clear. They could play that note or they could take their finger off and play the open string. And as I tell about that right now, I imagine a, a, a Neanderthal type who somehow invented that and, you know, uh, passing that on generation after generation, 40,000 years of people going plunk, 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 you know, and being totally enthralled with that. To some extent, I wonder if that mentality is not the same today, you know, because I have more frets than that. But there's something so marvelous about just sitting and plunking on a guitar. It was so nice. Try it real slow and, and very smooth, you know, almost, almost too smooth. And then the second time, well, really bounce. Yeah, I mean, really like a plane chain. Right. I think that's a, maybe, a maybe that's right good way of thinking of it. There is more solo music for the guitar than any other instrument in the world except the piano. There is not a fair-sized body of masterworks for the guitar. Um, I think almost every player experiences those moments of genuine envy and almost, um, almost disgust when he sees the repertoire of the piano. You know? um, we have no Brahms. We have no... Schubert, Schumann, Mendelssohn, Chopin. Can you imagine? As far as I'm concerned, I consider uh, transcription one of the uh, most uh, valid and uh, most traditional activities of a musician. If we look at the great musicians uh, of the past, transcribing uh, sometimes just flat stealing was, was a very revered form of learning. And I think on the guitar, if I transcribe something, I have to feel that it will make the instrument sound well, 
And in return, the instrument will bring something to the music that, um, without violating the original intent, uh, shows it uh, in a slightly different light. A transcription has to serve the music well, and it has to sound meaningful on the guitar, not just possible.
if you're talking about uh, someone who uh, plays at a very high level, the equipment that that person needs, I'd say that the, the main thing is he needs a good nervous system. He needs lightning responses. Uh, the, the actual contour, size, and shape of his hand is not so important. I think what you need is, um, as I say, good reactions. Uh, then you can learn to have some sort of mechanical skill, which by itself produces very little value. I think uh, he has to be creative. He has to be uh, intelligent enough to uh, want to develop something over a long period of time and not be satisfied too easily. He needs the same things that every other musician needs. Start rather soft and make a big crescendo here. Come back down here and then forte and quite staccato here. So let's hear the, the whole introduction. I would say everything that you can say about a musical performance in detail, everything that you can agree on about phrasing, style, articulation, ornamentation, all of those things are very much external. They're superficial. I'm not saying they're unimportant. They're very much external. Everything about a musical interpretation that is spontaneous and creative is internal. Now, those two feed each other, but you can't get to one from the other. You buy that? We have two aspects of music making. One is Everything that we can say is correct, let's say, after studying the score. Mm -hmm. Then we have spontaneous things that happen, which, which I call creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, those things, if you study the score, you know everything that you're trying to produce, you have a much better chance of being creative within the right framework. So I think certainly that feeds that. The, the spontaneous things that just come out, that you just want to express, I think are the reason you play in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I think they bring life to the things that you studied to put into the music. Avoid that more. If you've got a passage like this, it's difficult to play to begin with. And you've got, uh, you say, okay, I'm going to play the bass line a certain way with a certain crescendo. I've got um, two voices implied out of this compound line. I'm going to do one thing with the upper voice. I'm going to do a different thing with the middle voice. Uh, pretty soon, you're going to get to the point where you can't play at all. You know, it's too much to balance. So let's try doing two things. One. Bring out the middle voice as much as you can to play the guy.
I have a theory that we, while we enjoy 
huge masses of sound while we enjoy the symphony and uh, the popular music that is enormously loud as a kind of uh, oh, outlet for aggressions, really, in some ways. I think people also have a, a very profound need for something as intimate as possible at the other extreme. And the guitar certainly provides that. There's a directness of communication there. People have a need for that. Thank you.